Hey guys, as promised, I am back to share some more information about the application process for the graduate programs at NTU. For those new to my channel, I am Neha Agrawal. I have a master's degree from NTU Singapore and I have studied and worked in Singapore for almost 3 years. If you wish to know some facts about NTU, what are the different graduate programs that NTU has to offer, what are the different scholarships available and how to apply for them, you can watch my previous video on the admission process at NTU. Or if you just want to know some facts about Singapore, you can also watch my video on why Singapore is one of the best countries to live in for a student. And now, let's get going. In this video, we are going to first talk about the application period for the different graduate programs along with their application deadlines. I will also share the qualifying examinations that you need to give in order to apply for these graduate programs with their cutoff scores. I will also share my GRE and TOEFL scores with you so that you can get a better understanding of the admission requirements. And finally, I will share some information about the service obligation scheme because there is usually so much confusion around it. And last but not the least, I will also answer some of the most commonly asked questions by you regarding the admission process. So, let's begin. Similar to the US universities, NTU also has two intakes every year. One is in August and the other one is in January. But one thing to note here is that not all schools and programs have two intakes. It is usually left to the discretion of the schools to decide whether they want to take admissions only in August or both in August and January. For example, the School of Material Science and Engineering, they take two intakes for all their graduate programs, be it Masters by Engineering, Masters by Coursework or PhD program. While for the School of Tripoli e or Electrical and Electronics Engineering, they take two intakes only for their research based programs, which is Masters by Engineering and PhD but they have only one intake for their masters by coursework or the degree that gives you masters of science. So checking all this information before applying to the university is very important. Next is the application deadline. Now the application deadline also varies from school to school. But in general, if you are aiming for the August intake, the application portal usually opens in November or December of the previous year and closes either in January or April of the next year. So say for example you are aiming for August 2022 admissions, then you should start applying by November or December of this year which is 2021. Similarly for the January intake, the application portal usually opens in July or August of the previous year and closes in October. But one anomaly that I have noticed is for the school of Tripoli, e, where they state that the application portal for the January intake closes in August only. Therefore, checking all this information much in advance is very important for you to submit your applications in time. Now the next question comes in, which intake should I aim for? Should I go for the August intake or should I go for the January intake? Well, for most of the schools, Maximum number of candidates are admitted for the August batch, while very few candidates join the university in January. So if you want to increase your chances of getting admission in the program of your choice, I would suggest that you aim for the August intake only. Now the first basic requirement is that you should have a good bachelor's degree. Now they don't specify any CGPA cutoff as such, but personally I feel that anything above 8 or 8.5 should be decent enough. I had a CGPA of 9.76 out of 10 when I was applying for my master's program at NTU. Coming to the qualifying examinations. So there are two kinds of qualifying exams that NTU usually requires. The first one is an overall proficiency exam and you can choose between either GATE or GRE. And the other one is an English proficiency exam and you have an option to choose between TOEFL and IELTS. Now, which qualifying exams are needed also depends on the kind of program that you are applying to. In general, if you are applying to a Masters by Coursework program, so basically the program that gives you a Masters of Science degree, you do not need any qualifying exam. So definitely GATE and GRE is not required. 
for TOEFL and IELTS, the university says that you need to submit the scores only if your medium of instruction is not in English. But for most of us applying from India, usually our undergrad education is in English. So if you are able to submit a proof of that from your university, you don't need to submit your TOEFL or IELTS scores. When I was applying for my masters, I was applying to both US and Singapore and therefore I had given the TOEFL exam anyway. So I chose to submit my TOEFL scores to NTU as well, even though it was not required. Coming to the cutoff scores for NTU, most of the programs have a cutoff of 100 out of 120 for TOEFL and 6.5 for IELTS. My TOEFL score was 112 out of 120 when I was applying for my graduate program at NTU. Now, if you're applying for a research-based program at NTU, either your Masters of Engineering or PhD programs, that is where your GRE or GATE scores come in. If you're applying from India, you have an option. You can either go for GRE or you can go for GATE. Either one is okay. And as for the TOEFL and the IELTS exams, the same instructions apply. If your medium of instruction in undergrad was English, then you don't need to submit these scores. But my suggestion would be that you still submit them just to be on the safe side. Now coming to the cutoff scores. So for GRE, the cutoff also varies from different school to school. But in general, it's good to have a score of 319 out of 340. And the minimum qualification score required for each of the sections, which is quant and verbal, it should be 149 out of 170. And as for AWA, the minimum score should be 3.5 out of 5. For GATE, they also have a cutoff score. So you should have a minimum of 90 percentile in GATE to be able to apply to the graduate programs at NTU. Personally for me, when I was applying for my masters, I had already given the GRE in order to apply to the US. Therefore, I did not give the GATE exam. And in my GRE, I had a total score of 322 out of 340. I had a 170 out of 170 in quant and a 152 out of 170 in verbal with a 4.5 out of 5 in the AWA section. But over the years, what I have noticed is that the GRE score requirements are becoming more and more stringent with each passing year. So if you have really good GRE scores, then you have a very high chance of standing out from the other applicants. So starting from 2019, the Singapore government has scrapped the service obligation scheme for all coursework programs. So essentially your master's of science degrees. So if you're applying to any of these coursework programs, you have to pay the full tuition fees. Now coming to the research based programs. So for the research based programs, there are two kinds. One is masters of engineering and another one is the PhD program. So for the PhD programs, there are usually a lot of scholarships available and most of the people tend to go for a PhD only if they secure the scholarship because otherwise the tuition costs can be very high. So if you've secured a scholarship to go for the PhD degree, then you don't need to opt for the service obligation. So if you think about it, the service obligation scheme now applies only to one kind of program, which is your masters of engineering. So in case you are unable to secure a scholarship for your research based masters, you can opt for the service obligation scheme. Under this scheme, your tuition fees gets reduced by almost 50% with the bond that you will work in Singapore for three years after your graduation. Now, most of the people who come to Singapore for their masters also come with the intention of working there. So if you think about it, completing three years of work ex in Singapore is actually not that big a deal. I have a lot of friends who had opted for this service obligation scheme and they have now even completed their bond requirement. But say for any sort of reason, in case you are unable to complete your service obligation, you also have an option to buy yourself out from the bond. Say for example, you've not worked at all after completing your masters. In that case, you need to pay the same amount of tuition fees that was subsidized for you. Or if you worked for say one year after completing your masters and after that you want to buy yourself out from the bond, then you have to pay the remaining tuition fees that is calculated accordingly. For more details, you can visit the NTU's website because everything has been explained very clearly. 
And now coming to some common queries that I get from students. First question that most students ask is that I don't have any work experience. Can I still get admission in NTU? So as per the admission requirements, nowhere does it say that work experience is compulsory for admission into NTU. Usually the admissions committee evaluates your entire profile and based on that decide whether you should be given an offer or not. Having work experience definitely adds weightage to your profile, but it is not compulsory. When I was applying to NTU, I did not have any work experience myself. After completing my undergrad, I straight away went to apply for masters and I did get an offer from NTU. So there you have your answer. Another question that I get is, I don't have any research publications. Can I still get admission into any of the research programs at NTU? As per the admission criteria, having research publications is also not a compulsory requirement. But what I feel is that in order to get admission into any of the research programs, having some research experience is always good. When I was applying for my master's, I did not have research publications as well. But I did have research experience in the form of two research internships and two conference presentations. And that helped in getting me an offer into a research-based master's program. But what I feel is that if I had applied for a direct PhD just after my undergrad, that research experience would not have been enough for me to get into that PhD program and also secure a scholarship. So the answer to this question is that an admission into the research based programs at NTU is very subjective and depends on your unique research experience. Personally, I feel that whenever we sit down to apply to all these universities, we have a lot of doubts in our heads, whether our experiences are good enough or not, whether our profile stands up to other candidates or not. So to that, my suggestion would be that don't worry about it. What is done is done and it's all in the past now. So what you should do is control what is still in your hands, which is our SOPs, personal statements, LORs, resumes and our research proposals. So put in your best foot forward to prepare these documents very well and then just hope for the best for your admission. So guys, that is all that I wanted to share with you about the NTU admission process. If you still have any doubts, feel free to comment below and I will try and answer all your queries. And now wishing you all the very best for your admissions.